Okay, so actually creating graphs of sinusoidal functions. I'm not going to dwell on this section. I feel like in the year 2024, spending five minutes creating a kind of crack graph by hand when Desmos will create a very nice graph in a fraction of a second is maybe not the most worthwhile thing. But as for how we'd graph something like this, if we did want to graph it by hand, the answer is one step at a time. So we'll start by graphing a sign. So the sign looks like this. And of course, the sign repeats forever in both directions. Um, usually when you're asked to graph a one of these functions, by hand, what you're going to be looking for is a single period. Because remember, this function repeats forever. Once we know what one period looks like, we know what the entire period looks like. This sign goes up to one and down to negative one. This point here is I, but that's close enough to three if we're going to be working by hand. And this is about six. So let's start messing with this graph. Instead of an amplitude of one, we should have an amplitude of two. Our period is not changed as it happens in this example. Uh, maybe we should, let's modify this example so that our period is something else. Our period will be two pi divided by two. Well, since we're just doing a rough sketch by hand, two pi is about six. So two pi over two is about three. Yeah. So that tells us that we have to take this graph, this curve, and smush it together. It's currently spread out over about six units. We need to smush it down so it's spread out over about three units. So here's three, our new amplitude is two, So the graph so far with the adjusted amplitude and the adjusted period ought to look something like that. Now let's shift it. We've got a vertical shift and a horizontal shift. The vertical shift is two units up. So now, instead of going from negative two to positive two, it should go from zero to four. 
everything gets shifted up to units. So from negative two to zero, from two to four. It starts mid at the midpoint. So this starting value is also going to be shifted up to units from zero to two. Let me see. What's my scale? I guess I'm calling two lines on the notebook paper. One unit on the curve. So we should start at two, go up to four, come down to zero midway through and then come up again to two. So our graph with the adjusted amplitude, the adjusted period, and the vertical shift should look something like this. What about um, horizontal shift? Well, the horizontal shift should be one over two. And we are subtracting a positive number. So it's going to the right. So, Let's see, this is about 1 1.5, 0 0.51, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. We want to shift everything to the right by one hand. And this curve, more or less, is what one period of this graph looks like. Let's uh, check our work. Here is what one period of this curve should look like. And you see in retrospect, let me, uh, sorry, I have, do not quite know what's being shared. Um, so this, I did not do a good job, obviously, of making this to scale. I mean, this is three in the vertical direction. This is three in the horizontal direction. So, but if we go to Desmos, we do get basically that graph. At point 0.5, it starts at 2, it goes up to 4, then it goes down to 0, then it goes back up to 2. Our initial graph, before we shifted anything, went from about zero to three. We shifted it 0.5 units to the right. So this is going from about 0.5 to 3.5. Making allowances for the error or the differences, let's say in scale, this is the graph we generalized. We, we generated was the word I was looking for there. Again, not 
convinced that doing that by hand is better than doing it on the computer, but mathematicians are a traditional lot. We all did problems like that when we were students, and now we inflict that on later generations.